This is the first of two videos about sunglasses. Besides looking good, sunglasses provide comfort by toning down bright light and protection from ultraviolet and impact injury. Hello, my name is Craig Blackwell. I'm an ophthalmologist in Santa Cruz, California. Living beside the Pacific Ocean, I get a lot of questions about sunglasses. The features that provide comfort are darkness level, tint color, and polarization. Protection from ultraviolet is a separate issue. After looking at each of these features, we will finish with a field trip to the beach and look through a sample of lenses to see how they perform. In the second video, we cover UV protection in more detail. The choice of how dark you want the lens depends on what makes you comfortable. There are three general levels of darkness. For example, here are three levels of gray tint. On the left is a light tint. This particular one blocks 10% of the light, allowing 90% to come through the lens. Some people find this comforting in situations with bright indoor lighting, and different colors have been used as fashion choices. In level 2, medium tint lets 50% of light through. This is not commonly used because it is too dark for indoors and not dark enough for outdoors. Level 3 allows about 20% of light to come through, that is, it blocks out 80%. This is the typical level for sunglasses. The idea is to reduce the amount of light coming through the lens to a comfortable level, but you don't want a lens for everyday use that is too dark. It will make objects in shadow, like pedestrians, hard to see. There are special situations of particularly bright environments like skiing and mountain climbing where a darker lens is useful. Adding a mirror coat to a tinted lens can reduce light transmission to as low as 8%. In this situation, it is also helpful to have side shields or a wraparound frame design. Lenses can be partly dyed to create a gradient of darkening, like in this example. Tint color makes a big difference in what you experience with the glasses. The typical colors for sunglasses are gray, green, and brown. Neutral gray is a common choice because it does not distort colors and it provides an overall less bright, toned down image. Green has similar qualities but seems less popular these days. Brown, which is gaining in popularity, gives a sense of higher contrast and a brighter image, but adds some color changes. Later, on our field trip, we will look through the different colors to show their effects. Photochromic lenses are the ones that darken up when exposed to sunlight. They were first introduced by Dow Corning in the late 1960s, and they seemed like a bit of magic when they came out. This lens contains a photosensitive chemical, which is nearly clear indoors. I have just taken this lens out of my pocket. When exposed to the ultraviolet part of sunlight, the lens darkens up. This is after about a minute. When you go back indoors, away from the sun's UV rays, the lens returns to its clear state. The first Corning lenses were made out of glass with names like Photo Gray and Photo Sun. More recently, a lighter weight plastic lens was developed under the name Transitions, which is a brand name that has taken over like the word Kleenex. As a demonstration, this transition lens was exposed to sunlight for two minutes with the right half of the lens covered. This graph shows how fast the darkening happens. This comes from Corning's technical specs for their sun sensor lens. The left axis is percentage of light transmission. Let's follow the curve. At the start, the lens is not fully clear with about 15% absorbance, like a light indoor tint. After exposure to sunlight for a couple of minutes, the lens darkens to 80% absorbance, a typical level for sunglass. Here at the 15 minute mark, the lens is about as dark as it's going to get. At this point, the lens is removed from sunlight. You can see it takes quite a bit longer for the lens to lighten up, and it never becomes totally clear. Here is something you might not expect. Most photochromic lenses do not darken up well in a car. Why? Because your car windshield filters out most of the ultraviolet light, so that reduces the stimulus for darkening. This lens sat on my dashboard in direct sun for about five minutes. Looking out through the windshield, you can see it is slightly dark. 
This is the same lens outside the car in direct sun for a minute. If you want dark glasses for driving, that means getting a regular pair of dark glasses. Though I will note, there are new lenses on the market which are supposed to darken up in the car. Polarized lenses. When light reflects off certain surfaces, like water, it sometimes produces annoying glare. Certain glasses can do the trick of filtering that out. Here is how that works. The sun gives off a wide spectrum of electromagnetic waves. By that we mean there are individual light rays, rays or waves of many wavelengths. We perceive the mixed rays of the visible part of the spectrum as white light. The arrows on the lower right are meant to show the light waves are oriented in random directions. For the purpose of this discussion, I am only showing one vertical wave in blue and one horizontal wave in orange. The color choice is only for illustration. The different colors could be oriented in any direction. When light bounces off certain objects, like water for instance, the vertical waves, shown here in blue, are absorbed. The horizontal wave, colored orange, is reflected, which is what you perceive as glare. Now note that the reflected waves are all oriented in the same direction, horizontally, which means they have been polarized by reflection. There is another way to polarize light. There exists lens material that, because of its internal structure, allows light waves to pass through only if they are oriented in a particular direction. That is what is meant by a polarizing lens. In this illustration, the polarized lens is oriented so that it blocks the horizontal rays and allows only the vertical rays to pass. Can you see what's coming? Your sunglasses work the same way. The first polarization comes about by reflection, usually from a horizontal surface like water or a road surface, so they have a horizontal orientation. The polarizing material in your sunglasses is oriented vertically, so it blocks the horizontal waves and reduces glare. If your sunglasses were oriented in the other direction, they would let those waves through. By blocking out glare, the lens provides a nice level of comfort without having to be as dark. Here is an example of two polarizing lenses laying in the same direction. The first lens is polarizing the light, letting through light waves of only one orientation. The second lens has the same orientation, so it will also let those same waves pass. Where they overlap, things are a little darker because of the double tinted lenses. But if the second lens is oriented at 90 degrees, it will block the waves let through by the first one. Now the area where they overlap is a lot darker. Look again, same direction and at 90 degrees. The magic of polarization. Lastly, we come to ultraviolet light. In this video, we are only going to cover the highlights. For more details, see the second video. Remember our illustration of sunlight, showing that it contains many wavelengths, or a spectrum, of electromagnetic waves. Here is the part of the spectrum we are interested in. On the left is infrared, which has a long wavelength and is responsible for the warmth you feel from sunlight. In the middle is visible light, that colors our world, Ultraviolet light is past the blue end of the visible spectrum, thus the name ultraviolet. Because UV waves contain more energy, they have the potential to cause more damage. The UV spectrum is divided into three regions. The most energetic UVC is blocked by the atmosphere, so that is not a problem. UVB is your friend in small doses, but not your friend in large doses. You need a certain amount of UVB for your own production of vitamin D, which starts in your skin. But too much UVB is potentially a direct cause of skin damage. While less than 5% of UVB reaches the Earth's surface, over 95% of UVA gets through, and it is also potentially damaging. It has been clearly shown that cumulative exposure to ultraviolet radiation causes damage to exposed skin in the form of tanning, sunburn, accelerated skin aging and skin cancers, and surprisingly immunosuppression. Regarding eye structures, the skin of the eyelids develops cancer like any other area of the skin. The exposed conjunctiva can form a scar-like pterygium, shown here outlined by the white dashed line. The cornea can be affected. 
in the lens, UV accelerates cataract development. This picture is looking through a dilated pupil showing a cloudy lens. There are experimental reasons to suspect possible retinal damage, but that link is harder to prove. Protection from UV. You want transparent materials like glass to allow the visible spectrum through, but block out as much of the UV as possible. Regular window glass transmits infrared, visible light, and most of the UV. In your car, for safety reasons, the windshield is made of laminated glass, which blocks almost all of the UV. Remember, that is why your photochromic lenses do not darken in the car. The tempered side windows are not as protective, but the sunroof is pretty good. Common materials for eyeglasses include glass, standard CR39 plastic, and newer plastics polycarbonate and Trivex. This diagram shows how the different lens materials perform. The vertical scale shows the percent of transmittance. As we saw above, untreated glass allows just about all the UVA and some B through. CR39 plastic is better, absorbing about half the UVA. It can be treated to absorb over 90% of the UV. The newer materials, polycarbonate and Trivex, absorb over 90% of the UV by themselves. So if your glasses are made out of one of these two materials, you don't, you don't need additional UV coating. If the lenses are made out of glass or CR39 plastic, you should consider UV coating if you spend a significant amount of time outdoors. Here are the general measures for UV protection. Wearing a hat will significantly decrease UV exposure to the face and eyes. Protect your skin with sunscreen and clothing. Sunglasses are certainly helpful. Decide if a tanning booth is worth the risk. Now, even though we know the risks of UV exposure, it doesn't mean that we are likely to stop going to the beach. This view is through a polarized gray tinted lens. My sunglasses, actually. You can compare the glare off the water, outside the lens, and through the lens. Here is the same view through a polarized brown lens of the same tint level. The feel is quite different. The image seems brighter. Here the lens is rotated to demonstrate the effect of lens orientation we talked about, in this case letting more glare come through. Here is a transition lens, gray tint, just out of my pocket. In the time it takes to set up the shot, it is already starting to darken. Here it is after a couple minutes to fully darken up. So you see there are a number of factors that go into choosing sunglasses. Looks, of course. Comfort, level of darkening depends on your activities. Average of 80% absorbance is good for most people. Dark enough for comfort, but not so much it hides things in shadows. Color choice depends on your preference. Gray and green are mostly color neutral. Brown and yellow increase brightness and contrast. Most of the lenses that darken in the sun only work in direct sun, not for driving, and they do not get all the way clear indoors. Polarization improves comfort by reducing reflected glare. Remember, it is not the darkness or polarization that protects against UV. UV blocking is based on material choice or a special coating. I don't want to leave without pointing out that wearing glasses provides a measure of protection from impact injury. Particularly, polycarbonate and Trivex are many times more impact resistant than glass or plastic lenses. If you're interested in knowing more about ultraviolet light and its effects, see the second video of this set.